Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll continue our Orgo Basics discussion by looking at resonance structures. You can find this entire series by visiting my website, LeiaForSci.com slash Orgo Basics. I showed you how to find the Lewis structure of a molecule, including the formal charges, but what if I'm asked to draw the structure for acetate, which is CH3CO2 minus? If I refer to the structure and try to follow the rules that we discussed when figuring out where to put pi bonds, I see that I have the option to put the pi bond between carbon and the upper oxygen, giving me a, a total of two lone pairs for the upper oxygen and three lone pairs for the lower. This would give me a formal charge of negative one on the lower oxygen. However, what if instead I chose to draw the pi bond between carbon and the lower oxygen, giving the lower oxygen two lone pairs and the upper oxygen three lone pairs and a formal charge of negative one. Which is the correct structure? And the answer is that they are both correct. They are each resonance contributors or resonance structures of each other, which tells you that the electrons are moving back and forth or resonating between the two molecules. In fact, if we wanted to show what this molecule really looks like, we have to draw each oxygen with two electron pairs and then show that other pair going back and forth between the two oxygen atoms with a partial negative on each given that the negative charge doesn't really sit on one or the other. This is considered the resonance hybrid, which is simply the in-between. Now the idea with resonance is that in reality, these electrons are moving back and forth, but they're moving so quickly, it's hard to show this with pen and paper. So instead, what we do is we show the extremes, and anytime the electrons stop in one location, we show a charge. If the electrons depart from that location, then we don't show the charge. The resonance contributors are considered the imaginary extremes of the resonance hybrid, which is the real thing. Another way to think of this is picture two imaginary creatures. Now, before you tell me they're real, I have never seen them, so we're calling them imaginary. Picture a unicorn and a dinosaur having a baby. The unicorn is imaginary, the dinosaur is imaginary, but their baby, the rhinoceros, is something real that we can visualize and we can see characteristics of both its parents. The resonance hybrid that we show here shows the characteristics of both extremes. We have a negative on the lower oxygen, a negative on the upper oxygen, a pi bond between them, and we see that with the partial charges and that dotted bond moving between the two oxygen atoms. The important thing with resonance is not only knowing what they are, but also showing how you form them. To demonstrate this, we're going to erase the second resonance and show you how to form one from the other. Your resonance structures start out with a lone pair of electrons, preferably something negative or highly electronegative. We'll draw these electrons in blue to demonstrate what they are. When you draw your resonance arrow, the arrow is simply the path that the electrons take, and so you have to start your arrow at the electrons and end the arrow exactly where it's going. If these electrons are forming a bond, you want to end the arrow between the two atoms where the bond is forming. If the electrons, such as this red bond, is moving on to an atom, you want to end the arrow on the atom to show that that's where they're going. The next key important feature with resonance is to draw a double-headed arrow because this double-headed arrow tells you that it goes forward and back and forward and back and back and forth so quickly that you know it's feasible in both directions. And finally, for the product of our resonance structure, we have to redraw the skeleton exactly as we see it and then show what happened as a result of every arrow. For the top oxygen, we have two purple lone pairs that haven't changed. For the lower oxygen, we have two green pairs that haven't changed. The blue electrons on the negative oxygen used to be a lone pair giving oxygen a negative charge. Now it's sitting between carbon and oxygen as a pi bond, so we have to show that. The red electrons used to sit here as a bond, but we have an arrow demonstrating the collapse onto the top oxygen, and that's why we show it here as a lone pair on that oxygen. We assume that the negative charge moved from the lower to the upper oxygen, but we want to prove that by doing a quick formal charge. If you are not familiar with my shortcut, go back to layerforsci.com slash orgobasics and scroll down to that formal charge video where I show you how to do the simple should minus has. 
The upper oxygen should have six valence electrons in its neutral state, but it has seven electrons directly attached to it. Six minus seven is negative one, and that justifies the negative charge up top. The lower oxygen should have six electrons attached, but what we see is actually six, and six minus six is zero, justifying the loss of that negative charge. Another thing you want to look for with your resonance structure is the law of conservation of charge. If the entire molecule started out with a net charge of negative one, that negative one has to be present for the net of the product. And looking at the product, we indeed have just one charged atom, negative one, helping us recognize that we did the structure correctly. One final rule for resonance, put brackets to show that these structures are resonance forms of each other. This can get a little trickier when you're dealing with line structure due to having invisible hydrogen atoms on carbon. The trick for formal charge has you looking at all the bonds, but if you don't see that invisible hydrogen, it's easy to forget that it's there and mess up your account. When you're doing formal charge, ideally you want to start with negative lone electron pairs because those electrons have that negativity concentrated on one atom and they want to distribute the charge to lessen that burden of charge. If you don't have negative electrons, look for lone pairs. And if you don't have lone pairs, look for pi bonds. In the molecule that we have here, we don't have negative or lone pair of electrons. The only electrons we see that are capable of moving are the pi electrons, which will show in purple and green to tell them apart. Another trick you want to keep in mind is to never ever resonate onto an sp3 carbon atom. The reason for that is these moving electrons are in the p orbital, either in a pi bond or as a lone pair, or if you have a carbocation, the electrons move into that empty p orbital. But an sp3 carbon has a complete octet and cannot accept another bond. If I try to move these electrons here, it looks like a decent resonance structure, but don't forget, we have three invisible hydrogen atoms, and that means the green bond will be bond number five and cannot happen. Okay. So in this case, I have the option of starting with the green or the purple pi bond, but I can only move them within the sp2 hybridized atoms. So if we look at the hybridization, we have four sp2 hybrids. I'll choose to start with the purple electrons. If I move these electrons to sit in between the carbon that holds the purple pi and the green pi, it's going to form a pi bond in between. But this carbon would have a fifth bond, which is not possible. So the electrons in that pi bond have to collapse and move over to that other carbon atom. To show that this is resonance, we put a double-headed arrow and then we redraw the skeleton of this molecule and fill in the bonds accordingly. We now have the purple bond sitting one position over, and we have the green electrons sitting as a lone pair on a carbon atom. To find the formal charge in a skeletal structure, you don't want to go through the entire process, so here's a trick you want to keep in mind. If a carbon atom had a pi bond and did not get another pi bond in return, such as this one, it lost the pi bond and had nothing to replace it, it is now deficient and gets a positive charge. So we formed a carbocation. If a carbon atom had a pi bond and still has a pi bond, even though it's in a different direction, its formal charge hasn't changed because the number of bonds or the number of electrons in its octet hasn't changed. And finally, if a carbon used to have a pi bond and now has a lone pair, it has an extra electron and that's going to give us a negative charge. The last thing you want to do, especially in a tricky example like this one, is verify that the charges are conserved and the number of electrons are conserved. In addition to the skeletal structure, we had four resonating electrons, and that means we still want to see those four resonating electrons. We have two of them sitting as a pi bond, two of them sitting as a lone pair, and we're justified. We also want to check the charge. The first molecule is neutral, which means it has a net charge of zero. The second molecule has a carbocation, which is plus one, a lone negative pair, which is minus one, and plus one minus one equals zero. Since the starting and ending products have the same charge, we have conserved charge, we have conserved electrons, and we are good to go. 
be sure to join me in the next video where I show you how to identify the major and minor resonance contributing structures when the two structures don't look equal to each other. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.